Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and I just wanted to show you a fabulous little trick uh, for when you're solving equations with uh, fraction multipliers. I know a lot of you guys freak out when you see a fraction, but actually fractions are not that scary when it comes to multiplication and division. They're pretty stinking simple. Uh, notice what I have here. This says two thirds x is equal to eight. Directions say solve, and I say duh, of course I'm solving, because look at this, I have an equation with that equal sign there. I could certainly work to get the letter by itself on its side of the equal sign, and that's what I'll do. Now notice, the only thing I have to get rid of in order for x to be alone is this 2 thirds. This 2 thirds needs to go away, and then my x will be isolated. And I've got a really nifty trick to do that. So let me explain why it works first and then I'll show you what it means. Remember that if you have two thirds of something, that's like you've divided by three. This number on the bottom is a divider. So two thirds of something, like let's say, um, I've got six, some dude standing on a street corner. I don't know how many dudes because it's a two thirds X, but I'll just pretend like it's six and I want two-thirds of them. That means I'm going to divide by three. I'm going to break the group into three equal pieces. One, two, three, and I want two-thirds of those. So I'm going to times by the two. So it's like the bottom number is a divisor and the top number is a multiplier when you have two-thirds x. Because of that, I can get rid of both of them at the same time very, very quickly by reversing their role. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to include this entire left-hand side here in parentheses. Right now, that three is on the bottom of a fraction, it's dividing. I'm gonna throw that three on the top to be multiplying. And similarly, that two on the top is a multiplier, so I'm gonna throw that two on the bottom to divide. And this number, notice it's a flip of the original fraction. It's known as the reciprocal. The flip of a fraction is known as its reciprocal. Oh, I just spelled reciprocal wrong. Reciprocal. Okay. Um, it's known as its reciprocal, and it's a really nifty little trick because it'll get rid of a fraction multiplier. Why? Because multiplying by 3 and dividing by 3 cancel. 3 on the top, 3 on the bottom. And multiplying by 2 and dividing by 2 cancel. 2 on the top, 2 on the bottom. And so x would be alone. Now you can't just do whatever you feel like it, but you can do whatever you want as long as you do to both sides of the equation. Keep your balance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the entire right hand side and just like I did on the left, I'm also going to multiply by 3 halves. As long as I balance my change and my, so my two equations halves stay equal, my two sides of my equation stay equal, I am totally safe in the world of algebra. So on this side we saw that cancellation, so my x would be alone. And on this side I just have to multiply this fraction, 3 halves of 8, and it's super easy to multiply fractions. Um, I'm going to throw that 8 over 1 so it looks like a fraction. I'm going to cross reduce. Both 8 and 2 are divisible by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1 and 8 divided by 2 is 4. And then I'm going to multiply straight across. Now of course 4 times 3 is 12. On the bottom, 1 times 1 is 1, but I know that 12 divided by 1, when you have a 1 on the bottom of the fraction, it doesn't do anything. 12 over 1 or 12 divided by 1 is just 12. And so my answer here is x is equal to 12, and those fractions weren't half as tricky as they looked. So once again, I'll say in order to get rid of a fraction multiplier, you can just multiply both sides by the reciprocal. Great. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.